welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of investing in yourself. The truth is, without hesitation, we invest our money on designer brands and material things that don't make any difference in the quality of our lives. We invest in the latest brand name shoes, the latest technology, the list continues. We treat those designer things with so much love and care because of their financial worth. But why don't we put the same time and effort into investing in the most valuable asset we have, ourselves? Investing in yourselves is one of the smartest things you can do. Whether that's taking time to learn something new or putting in the effort daily to work on your physical and mental wellness. Unlike material possessions that have no real value, investing in yourself is invaluable and you will continue to reap the benefits for the rest of your life. Successful people see themselves as high value and worthy effort. Therefore, they take the time to improve themselves each and every day. As Will I Am quotes, it's never a waste of time or money to invest in yourself. True wealth begins inwards and emits its light outward into everything else, including the people you surround yourself with. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And how do they practice this in their in sports, I know a lot of celebrities, all kinds of people use well, I'll practice. give you an example. Um, Bianca Andrescu, who won the US Open, she had attended one of my seminars at the sixth day. She tweeted about it. And when she beat Serena Williams in the US Open, and they asked her why she was so positive, how she did it, she held up my book. Now, what Bianca was doing, and you can see an interview with her on my Instagram, she was practicing the creative visualization component of the sixth phase from the age of 16 to 19. She beat Serena Williams when she was 19. She was applying creative visualization and visualizing in a specific way using a silver method called the mental screen, exactly how the match was to unfold. Now, there's more nuance to it. It's not just about your imagination. And that's where phase one, two, three, five, and seven, and six come in. So again, Google it. It's free. You will find it. Or if you download the, 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 the Mind Valley Meditation app, it's available on the meditation on, on the Mind Valley app. Wardrobe provided by HM. Next up on the show, we have Vishen Lakiani, an award-winning entrepreneur, speaker, New York Times bestselling author, and founder of Mind Valley, a global education movement with millions of students worldwide. Vishen, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Dariel. Thanks for having me. I'm very, very excited to have you. I've been anticipating this interview for a while, so thank you for being here. <laughs> you do some incredible work. Let's talk about, you know, the start of your entrepreneurial journey. The start? Well, what, what happened? Um, for those of your audience that knows Mind Valley or know me through my book, it really started because I was working in Silicon Valley and um, got burned out. And I realized that what I thought was the ideal life, the ideal job wasn't for me. I discovered meditation and that was one of those things that completely expanded my mind. So I ended up seeing my, my performance in my career at the age of 26 just accelerate when I started adopting a meditation practice. And later on, I decided to quit the Valley and start a company to teach meditation. That's really how Mind Valley started. You know, a lot of people struggle with mastering their minds. You know, they have negative thoughts about I'm not good enough or things like success is reserved for some people, but not for me or I can't achieve it. So how do you help people get past those mental blocks? Well, if you ask me what type of tools Mind Valley teach, practically all the great personal growth teachers that you think about are on our platform, hundreds of teachers, um, tens of thousands of tools we measure and we look at close to 207 unique human outcomes. Mental blocks is just one of that. But mental block isn't even really a human outcome. It's too vague. It's too fussy. You might be talking about mental fog, which is a slowdown of cognition of your brain. You might be talking about abundance blocks, which are blocks that prevent you from truly hitting the next level. You might be talking about imposter syndrome. So our tools are so precise and so exact that if you can articulate what exactly you mean by a mental block. My gift is that because I, I interview and I work with so many teachers, I'm an integrator. I can very quickly pinpoint the best, most scientific, most effective methodologies to transform a human being. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I, I can't answer to mental block because it's so vague a world word. It's like asking me, how does a computer work? Rather than asking me, how does an 8086 motherboard work? Mm -hmm. It's just that so many people have these, these thoughts like I'm not good enough or they don't feel that success is meant for them or they don't believe that they can achieve success like on your level, for example. So those are the mental blocks I'm talking about. And how can people I see? Of, yeah, there's you know, right. those, those thoughts are kind of running through your head 24 seven. So for those people that have those mental blocks of I'm not good enough or success is not for me, it's for someone else like vision, <laughs> you know? Well, OK, so let's address that. Right. OK, so the first thing is when some people feel that success is not for me, it's for it's for other people. First, you got to look at your definition of success. Are you operating with a definition that's truly coming from your heart or is it coming from societal programming? In my first book, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind, I talk about this concept called rules versus rules. A rule is an understanding of the world that makes life easier for us. For example, don't walk out naked, right? A rule, however, is a bullshit rule. It is a pre-programmed idea of how the world should work. Uh, for example, be a lawyer and you're going to make be successful. That's a rule because 50% of lawyers are actually clinically depressed. And so you got to understand first, what do you mean by success? Mind Valley members, we don't even use the word success because we defragment it into its constituent parts. There are 12 different dimensions of your life in which you can measure success from health to character, to emotional states, to parenting, to your love life, to your, your entrepreneurial ventures, to your environments. So you got to be able to look at life from a lens where it is holistic, but also where it's coming from your heart. Now, the technique to do this, the most effective technique that I know of, is a technique called the three most important questions. I invented the technique around nine years ago. Uh, I shared it in a YouTube video and it got really popular because it got tweeted around. If you search for that, the three most important questions, you will find that technique. It's simple. It's a seven minute exercise where I ask you a set of questions to help you go deep within inside you and figure out what is it that you really want out of life. That's the first thing. Now, once you identify that, the next thing is to fine tune that essence of yourself. Call it soul, call it spirit, call it whatever you want to help you get to this new vision for your life. Now, the most effective technique for that, that I can think of that's quick, easy, free, is the six phase meditation. It's a meditation protocol that is based in science and it covers six different pillars of the human condition. If you can get these pillars up, you are more likely to be successful. So let's talk about that. Think of computer games, right? If you're playing any type of computer game, I know your audience is mostly medallion. You got to upgrade your, as a character in the game, you got to upgrade your stamina, upgrade your endurance, upgrade your charisma. As you get full points in these things, you're better able to defeat the evil Lord Voldemort or whoever you're fighting in that game. Yeah. There are six characteristics in our human condition that if you can elevate, you are more likely to win the game, the game of life. The six phase meditation is a set of transcendent practices that you do in your head in the morning in no more than 15 minutes. You don't have to clear your mind. You don't have to focus on your breath. You do these transcendent practices in your head. Five of them are proven by science. Six is more mystical. But what happens is you up level these characteristics. And these characteristics are sense of compassion and kindness, happiness and bliss, forgiveness and the feeling of safety, vision for your future three years out, intention for your day to day, and then a feeling of being blessed and supported. If you can do this, you never have to worry about feeling insecure or feeling disempowered because most of those feelings actually don't exist. Our mind makes it up based on societal conditioning. Almost all emotions that we feel are really internal states of our body that we are giving a label to. And we go, oh, that that icky feeling, that's depression. But sometimes it could just be that your body is low on serotonin and you can fix it with 5-HTP, which is that bottle of pills I'm holding up right now. Mm -hmm. When you understand, when you get become self-aware and you become self-accepting, you move beyond these, these, these lower states. Um, and I know that's a lot given the short amount of time we have, but it's very simple. I've put everything out there on the web, free for everyone. The three most important questions and the six phase meditation. Mm -hmm. 
before we talk more about your teachings, I want to talk about Mind Valley. You started it in 2003. So for our viewers that don't know, I'm sure everyone knows, but tell us a little bit about your company. Well, Mind Valley used to be was was basically just a venture incubator. I was a programmer. I built one of the world's first social bookmarking engines called Blinklist. Mind Valley did a lot of different things, but in 2013, I decided to dedicate it to building a school for life learning, a school to teach everything that regular school forgot, and that's where we are today. Uh, go to mindvalley.com and you can learn all about it. All of these amazing programs, amazing teachers, and the our programs are designed like computer games. We call it a quest. You go on a seven, fourteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight day journey, and these journeys unlock new levels of human of, of the human condition one of my favorites that i'm that i'm doing right now is uh, super reading with with jim quick um in 21 days on average your reading speed improves 270 percent and mm -hmm. this is about 10 minutes a day for 21 days it's micro learning mm -hmm. i want to talk also about the silva method i know you're a silva instructor right. so let's talk about i know you credit it to changing your life so let's talk about that. How did it improve your life? Well, the Silver Method is is one of the original personal growth programs. It now exists on Mind Valley. So Mind Valley takes all of these massive programs. Sometimes the founders have died. Sometimes these programs are, are not getting the attention they deserve. We bring them into Mind Valley. We acquire, we buy, we license, and then we lower the price. Right. So the Silver Method used to be a five hundred dollar seminar. Now, if you're a Mind Valley member, the it's digitized. It's on the web for you. It's an 18 hour transformation that teaches you how to access altered states for intuition, for bending reality and to do some other really crazy stuff that you I probably wouldn't talk about in this interview. Mm -hmm. And how does how did meditation change your life? Because a lot of people are skeptical of meditation. I personally love it. I if you are day. if you are skeptical, firstly, that's a myth. People keep saying a lot of people are skeptical of meditation. No, it's a myth. Do you know studies of meditation have gone through an exponential curve? In other words, the number of studies is pretty much doubling every two years. It's now an exponential curve. At this point, there are 15,000 studies on the beneficial effects of meditation. You're either confused or you really uh, have outdated knowledge. If you said you were skeptical of meditation in 2003, kudos to you. Maybe there, there was a reason to be skeptical. But starting in 2003, meditation blew up. It appeared in the cover of Time magazine. CBS News reported, um, um, did a whole bit on meditation, how it is the wonder drug. If you're skeptical of meditation, that is an insane idea in 2021, given all the evidence to the contrary. Yeah, I think that people know the evidence and they know the benefits but they just don't know how to practice it. They don't know how to sit still. That's because, you know? that's because, that's because they don't know what it is. And that has to do with a lot of um, the way Americans embrace meditation. You think if it's done by a guy dressed as an Indian monk, sitting cross-legged for two hours, it must be cool. No, that is a outdated, ineffective way of meditation. FMRI brain scans today can show us exactly what is going on in the human brain. Effective meditation can be done in five, 10 minutes. The sixth phase is design rooted in science. You never have to clear your thoughts. You never have to focus on your breath, but everything there is scientific. In short, fMRI scans show that these particular phases, the six exercises you do in the sixth phase, and each one takes a minute to three minutes, truly create an impact on your brain. We have to stop thinking of meditation as a hermetic practice. A thousand years ago from India. That's not the way you meditate today. You know, saying you're skeptical of meditation is saying you're skeptical of exercise. There are aspects of exercise which are highly ineffective. Do you know jogging is actually negative exercise? But then there's exercise that's really effective. High intensity interval training, yoga. It's a question of what exercise. So likewise, there's meditation that wastes your time and is boring and is hard to do. And this meditation that science is showing actually elevates and restructures your mood and, and your attitude to life and your belief of what you're capable of. And that's the one you want to focus on. There are many practices for that. Um, the one that, that I put together is simply called the six phase. It's currently being used by, by um, sportsmen in every major American sporting league. Mm -hmm. And how do they practice this in their in sports? I know a lot of celebrities, all kinds of people use. Well, I'll give you an example. Um, Bianca Andrescu, who won the U.S. Open, she had attended one of my seminars at the Six Phase. She tweeted about it, and when she beat Serena Williams in the U.S. Open, and they asked her why she was so positive, how she did it, she held up my book. 
Now, what Bianca was doing, and you can see an interview with her on my Instagram, she was practicing the creative visualization component of the six phase from the age of 16 to 19. She beat Serena Williams when she was 19. She was applying creative visualization and visualizing in a specific way using a silver method called the mental screen, exactly how the match was to unfold. Now, there's more nuance to it. It's not just about your imagination. And that's where phase one, two, three, five, and seven, and six come in. So again, Google it. It's free. You will find it. Or if you download the the, the, the Mind Valley Meditation app, it's available on the meditation on, on the Mind Valley app. I'm a big believer in the law of attraction and the secret. So I want to ask you, what kind of things have you manifested in your life? And what are your thoughts on the law of attraction? Yeah. So the law of attraction, again, is a very simplistic idea. Your thoughts create your reality. Yes, they do. Is it the reticular activating system of your brain where you're simply more focused on what you point to your brain? Or is it a more metaphysical idea where you are influencing synchronicities, coincidences? I believe it's the latter, but it's not as simplistic that the movie Secret makes it out to be. If you really want to go deep, read the book that inspired the movie The Secret. And that book is called The Law of Attraction by Esther Hicks. That is the original book that inspired the movie The Secret. Absolutely. And talk to us more about some more practices that Mind Valley teaches, because obviously this is more than just meditation. This is really deep thinking. I know we only use a certain part of our brain. We don't use all of it. So what kind of practices are, does Mind Valley teach absolute. to really they activate your whole brain? Four levels of the human dimension, okay? And and people who come people who 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 come to Mind Valley typically are in four levels. There's the beginner level. They are skeptical of meditation, but something has happened. They've had what is called a disorienting dilemma lost their job, stressed out, divorce, going to a depression, they need to break free from that. And they learn really basic stuff, okay? If you read the book, The Law of Attraction, the author Esther Hicks, she says for people who are going through this, you don't even need to believe in the law of attraction. She teaches a simple technique called segment intending. Segment intending, where you just play a game of what if. Wouldn't it be nice if my dinner today was amazing? Wouldn't it be nice if the commute to work? You just simply reflect, wouldn't it be nice? You're not asked to believe anything big. But pretty soon you get to the second level. Now at the second level, you start understanding that your mind can influence reality. At the second level, that's when you start practicing creative visualization. You start, you know, you you, you might take up yoga. You might uh, take up high intensity interval training to build your musculature. Then there's the level above that level. Let's call it level Let's call the first one zero, the second one is one, then level two. Level two is where you go into concepts such as biohacking. You go into concepts such as manifesting into intuition. But that's still just, just the beginning. There's a level three. A level three is when you can wake up in your dreams and experience a lucid dream. A level three is when you can reverse your aging. A level three wow. is when you can it is when you can heal yourself and other people with the energy of your body. A level three is when you have, you can consciously have what is called an out of body experience. Mind Valley programs take people all the way to level three. Wow, that's, that's actually very interesting. How did you come up with these concepts? And I feel like you're a very enlightened person and you're very clear in your thoughts. So, you know, what are some of your daily um, activities that you work on cultivating your mind? Because well, these are pretty amazing practices. Well, I've been meditating for about, wow, since I was 14, I'm 45 now. So that's 31 years. Okay. Wow. And, and the other thing is I'm a researcher, um, with true mind Valley, I speak, connect and create teachings with so many amazing spiritual teachers with biohackers. Um, this week, Sadhguru joined Mind Valley. So I was working with Sadhguru's team on his new program on Mind Valley on inner engineering. Next week, Lee Holden of PBS fame. He's the Qigong teacher on PBF. He joins Mind Valley. So I studied with Lee on moving the energy body and Qigong. I study with everyone I bring to Mind Valley and I try to integrate that. I'm an engineer and my title is really transformational engineer. I look at the different tools, the different devices, the different philosophies, and I integrate that into practical systems which people can use. And then I build application software app to deliver these trainings to people. I want to talk a little bit before we go. I want to talk a little bit about phase three of really using your mind. You said waking up in your dreams. Like I, I really want to talk about that because right. that's really interesting. I, I think not everyone can understand those concepts. So can you explain them a little bit to our audience? Well, honestly, they're becoming more mainstream. Uh, let's talk about astral projection, right? Um, Vice News just released the um, page twenty-five of the CIA report on astral projection, um, and um, 
the Netflix show Behind Her Eyes is on astral projection. In fact, the consultant for that show, Jade Shaw, is our newest teacher. I'm actually going to have dinner with her tonight uh, because we just finished filming a new program on astral projection. This is where you learn how to have what is called an out-of-body experience. You learn to get to a certain energetic level where you are able to separate, create a separation between your consciousness and your body. Your body is here. Your consciousness could be in Paris. Mm -hmm. Now, if people want to learn more about this, the definitive book on it is called Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff reminds me that you're explaining reminds me of Limitless. In the movie, he, you know, he's just an average Joe. And then when he starts activating different parts of his brain, he becomes, you know, he sees reality you hit different. It. And, and, and I, that's what right. I was thinking about. And I believe in all of these concepts. Um, I read a lot, I meditate, and sometimes I feel like an, I, an outer body experience when I meditate, because I get this wealth of knowledge and it's from something high, like a higher power. And I get all this knowledge and people ask me sometimes when I write some of my my intros, they're like, where did that come from? I'm like, I don't know, because it's, it, it's coming from a higher source through me. <laughs> so I understand right. all what of these you are... concepts. Exactly. What you're talking about is a concept called channeling. Channeling, right? It's where you're able to source ideas outside the realm of your brain. Channeling is real and people who master it are able to deliver great interviews, great speeches, are able to write uh, fluidly and ideas just flow through them. Now, when you can intercept two different uh, states, channeling, which typically happens at the theta level of mind, and then flow states by Stephen Kotler, uh, both of which are on Mind Valley. Uh, theta level channeling is in the Silva program. Stephen Kotler's program, Habit of Ferocity, is also on Mind Valley. When you can activate both of those together, you become hyper creative. Mm -hmm. And for our audience that you know relates to limitless, you know, go have just you know working a nine to five, just you know being in the mundane state. How do they get to that next level of being the best version of themselves and really using all parts of their brain? Is meditation the only way, or are there other steps? Well, it, it's meditation. You got to do the right one, right? It, I mean, there are apps out there like Calm, which are fantastic, but mostly that is stress relief. That's the first step. To get to the next level, you want to do an advanced practice such as T6 phase. And again, like I said, it's free. Um, if you can't afford it, I made it. I literally made it free. It's available on, you'll find it on YouTube. Um, but if you can't afford Mind Valley, Mind Valley is one of the things we do is we, we bring all of these incredible programs together, thousand, two thousand dollar programs. Then we make everything available for a really, 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 really a, a low price. And we just lower that price again every eight months as we get 10, 20, 30,000 new members join. Because of economies of scale, we lower the price. And so if you go to mindvalley.com, depending on the country you're in, you will see what it costs and it's really affordable. And Vision, where does this wealth of knowledge come from? Because you have, I feel like a lot of the practices that you teach have not been heard of before, or, you know, they, they're on a Actually, they scale. have. Actually, they no, have. On a Everything I've scale. said. Some of the stuff I feel like that you're teaching um, is, is more in depth. It's not just about meditation and living your best life mm. and going, you know. No, I get you. I get you. Mind Valley doesn't do basic stuff, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's just that you 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 haven't been you haven't been going deep. I mean, let's talk about out of body experiences. There are at least eighty books on the subject on Amazon. It's these things are so common, so 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 common right now. It's just that I, I guess the 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 topic, the the area, the sandbox where you're playing hasn't gone there yet, but it's emerging very 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 fast. Everything I special I mentioned about is level one. Think about it as going to be mainstream education 10 years from now, level two, 20 years, level three, 30 years, which means by 2050, we will be teaching our kids to expand their consciousness beyond their body in schools. Mm -hmm. And how much of the population do you think is using level three? It, it's uh, These levels are simply the, the depth of sophistication that you need to apply to, to practice, right? OBEs could take you a hundred hours of practice. Basic meditation could take you an hour. So it's really the depth of practice. Um, and it's not, it doesn't make you better than anyone else. It's simply, it's, 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 we're look, talking here about a knowledge spectrum, not an I am more enlightened than thou spectrum. Mm -hmm. And how long does it, how many years does it take? How long does it take to learn to get to level three and really become, and not that, enlightened, what, but the knowledge? When, well, if you went through everything in Mind Valley, right? Everything in Mind Valley, it would be close to 500 hours. Actually, wow. probably more. 
probably more, probably maybe at this point, because we are adding content so fast, probably a thousand hours. But these are this is just the content. And then you also have to practice. Um, we there's just so much, so much. And it's growing. Our library is growing all the time. Vishen, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show today. It's been a pleasure and we hope to have you soon. Thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.